All right. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. Good. We're excited you're here. Thank you so much Thank for joining us. Thanks so much. I'm excited to be on here. Cool. So the intention is, Sarah, to just get, um, get our audience to know real life switches from many, many different people that are in different places in their lives and um, and how they've gone ahead to do that and how it's been, how it's turned out for them. And we thought to reach out to you because you're a, a great example of, um, of, of switching, of what this is, what this movement is. And uh, we know you're a writer and you write some awesome, awesome stuff that we always see on your Facebook profile. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, well, I think I started to write as soon as I was able to hold a pen, I think. Um, and as soon as I was able to form sentences, I was writing songs and poems. I think the first poem I can actually remember like fully being formed was probably in fourth or fifth grade. You remember um, that poem? I, you know, it's really funny is this morning I, I started thinking about that moment. I was thinking about writing and I, I remember every word of that poem that I wrote in fourth or fifth grade. Wow. That's nice. Yeah, in my, um, I, I took creative writing like my whole life, but I remember being in my little creative writing class and uh, the teacher looking at it and saying, we have to put this in the school paper. And so they did. And uh, actually <laughs> it's really funny and silly. So I'm gonna tell it to you because yeah. I really do know um, all the words to it. So go, <laughs> the title of the poem was called Harry's Disease. Okay. There, one, okay, there once was a dog. His name was Harry. As a matter of fact, he was quite merry. Until one day, the dog became displeased because while he was sleeping, he got a disease. Well, if you come right down to it, he was covered in fleas. The ow, ooh, the fleas started to bite. And oh, poor Harry, he started to write. What he wrote, he wrote just this about his family and all the things he would miss. He wrote about his dog bones he buried in the yard and about his master that he would never harm. But listen to us, the little flea screamed. Do you think that this is our lifelong dream? This dog tastes awful. He hasn't much meat. Whenever we take a bite of him, we get hair in our teeth. <laughs> oh, look, oh look, oh look, there goes the neighbor's cat. Say, she might taste better at that. Adios, sayonara, alvida, say goodbye, old Harry, and have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing how we can remember certain things so far back, and then some stuff just, we can't. <laughs> it was so funny, just instant recall. I'm like, I shouldn't remember that, but I do. And, and yeah. give you a little idea of what a nerdy little fifth grade Sarah was like. So. A very talented <laughs> Nerdy fifth grade Sarah. <laughs> yes, extremely talented. And you've kept it up. So, so we're interested. Yeah, in just, about your switch. Tell us what what moment was it for you? Um, you know, I like I said, I I always loved writing. I wrote all throughout uh, junior high and high school. Um, was really insecure about my writing though. Um, I would always have to be approached by other people to include my writing in anything. It wasn't anything I. I wanted to jump on. I would always love to write it, but never felt confident enough to say, hey, this is actually pretty good. And I want to, you know, have this put in the paper. The teacher had to approach me or my creative writing teacher in high school had to say, hey, we want to put this in the, in our little like school journal thing that we put out. And I go, uh, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I didn't really have a lot of value for, for my own voice. Like I appreciated so many other people and their writing and that would inspire me, but to, I didn't feel this, you know, confidence that what I had to say mattered. And um, like I went through some really, really difficult stuff in my life and I went through um, an extremely painful heartbreak. Um, and Actually, I remember the moment that I decided that I'd, I'd had enough and uh, of doubting myself and feeling sorry for myself. And I was actually um, sitting in 
the airport in Chicago, uh, O'Hare, and I was waiting for my flight, and I was just there by myself, and I was just had tears running down my face. Where not like I'm sitting there crying, but I just couldn't stop them. They were just like pouring out of my eyes, and I felt so miserable and so alone, and like I wasn't worth anything. And strangers kept walking past me, kind of glancing my way, and they kept going. And I thought, I had this thought to myself, if, if the roles were reversed and somebody else was sitting where I was sitting and I was one of those people, there would be no way that I wouldn't run over and go, what's wrong? How can I help you? Let's talk. And I, I just had this switch <laughs> where I said, you know what? I'm going to be that person because I don't want anybody to feel like this, to feel like they're alone, to feel like nobody sees them, to feel like they don't have any value. And I, I realized I had a decision to make. I could let my insecurities and um, the really bad things that happened to me, let that take me out or I could choose to like pull myself up and, and kind of just, you know, rise from the ashes, I guess, and say, you know what? No, enough is enough. And I've, I've been through a lot of things and I recognize those things. They matter, but I'm stronger and I will be that person for people. So in, in coming out of that, I decided I needed to do something where I could connect to other people. And I wanted to be able to do it in a way that, I mean, we don't have opportunities every single day to see somebody in the airport or on the bus or down the street who's just hurting and stop and talk to every single person. Like, I mean, I do do that sometimes, but like, I wanted to figure out a way that I could do that on a mass level. You know what I'm saying? And social media makes sense. And I go, you know what? I can take my experience and put that into my writing and send it out into the world and people who like me at the time had been you know hiding out in their room like netflixing and just being on you know kind of online doing whatever feeling miserable not wanting to connect with people in the real world could see something that i write and say oh that's me like i feel that i've I'm, I'm in that spot now. So when I write something and I put it out there and I get comments back or a message from somebody saying, like, I feel that so deep or like, this is me a hundred percent. Like that means everything because you're, you're connecting with somebody on such a, a vulnerable, intimate level, somebody that's, was a stranger, but knowing, like, I think that we have this thing just as people where we want everything to be unique to us. Like we have this message of be you, be yourself. Um, being unique is great and that's awesome. And I 100% agree with that. But I think that we also like to feel so unique in our emotions that we want to kind of own them and go, nobody else has ever felt this way. Mm -hmm. so I'm so in love and nobody understands, nobody, nobody's felt this. Or I'm so angry or hurt, nobody understands what this feels like. And that's not true. It's not true. And I went so long feeling that way, feeling like I was the odd one out. Nobody understands. But I really want to be able to put an end to that and find, find people, pull them around me and say, hey, I get it. I really get it. And there are so many people who get it because it's a, collect, a collective experience that we have in our humanity, love, hate sorrow all these things are that's a common thread throughout humanity and so when i find something that that moves me passionately i go this also moves someone else passionately so i have to write about it yeah. and so that's 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 what motivated my switch nice that's very that's nice beautiful and it's it's a, a huge mission and you're yes <laughs> you're connecting with people at such a deep level and it's healing sometimes to to see somebody, to see your pain in someone's writing, as I've been there, you know, even reading certain books, you read a paragraph or, or just a sentence and you're like, oh my gosh, like that's me, like right now. And it just kind of 
glues you in more, dials you in more to continue on, you know, exploring. And um, sometimes you tend to have certain feelings that are so deeply buried that you're not even aware of how it's impacting your whole life. And when something you come across, like a beautiful poem, writing, could open it up, you could choose to do something with it or, you know, and hopefully heal from it or, or not, but hopefully heal from it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Writing has defi definitely been so therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And, and I've been able to do so much healing through that because it, in seeing the way that it affects other people, like that, that helps heal my heart. And so like several years ago, I was just a mess. I, I was just an emotional mess. And by letting, letting the pain come out through, through my art, that helped heal heal my heart through that like and and also as people say yeah I feel that way and and you know you're doing so much good for them sometimes they don't realize how much good they are doing for you and it's just kind of this beautiful exchange that you have with people and go you know we're kind of healing together and some sometimes it's it's funny for me when I look back on things that I've written and I go I can't even believe that was me it, that I'm so, I'm so far past that pain that it's, it's like looking at someone else. And for me, that, that's an incredible freeing feeling to be able to have it documented and go, this was really my life where I was like miserable. I want to die pain. <laughs> and I go like, if I would only have known go that that someday I would be on the other side of that and and, and be looking back and saying god I, I really can't believe it but knowing that there are other people who are in that same spot right now and they can't see it either yeah. so I try to in in a lot of the things that I write create conflict and also resolve within the same piece because I want to do the setup of here's the problem, here's the pain, here's the hurt, but here's, here's what good comes out of that. Here's the resolve. So it's not this kind of constantly, you, you don't want somebody, I mean, it's not, a, you can't paint everything with a broad brush and say like, it all has to be this way. Right. The way I like to do it in a lot of things is say, here, here's where it hurts, but here is where it can go. And you're not, you don't have to be left in this in this painful moment that I've, I've kind of created for you right here and say like hey here you go and I'm leaving that right right so I, I try to, to to round it out and kind of bring bring hope because that's what I that's what my mission is is to to bring hope and healing to people and and have them not only feel understood but see a light and go it's this isn't forever for me this is like this isn't the end this is my mom used to tell me when I was going through my my hardest time she said you have to understand that this is only only one page in one chapter of your book and and you're you're trying but you, you will turn that page and you have no idea what the rest of your story is going to be but you have so much good ahead of you and so that's something that helped get me through a lot saying you know she's right this is this is one page in one chapter of my story, and, and that doesn't define who I am as a person. What's going to define me is how I choose to move from this place, how I choose to respond in this moment. That's, that's what that says about me, it is how, how I'm either going to, like I said, let it completely ruin me, or choose to take a stand and say, no, this is not how I'm going out, and, and do something else, so, yeah. So, so where are you now? Um, well, right now I'm happy. So that's a, <laughs> that's number one, the best thing I can tell you. Um, and, and I'm engaged and yeah. I have two happy little kitties and I live in California and I feel like most of the days that I have are full of adventure and, and laughter and I could never have imagined that before. 
Uh, and it's like, that's the best news is that, that that's my life is yeah. it's changed from seriously the most miserable a person could be to I'm so, so happy. Uh, and I'm moving forward with, with things with my poetry of some big projects that I, that are in the works that, that I will talk about another time, but, um, I feel motivated and excited and it's just, obviously a really great support system around me now and yeah that's where I am yeah that's awesome. that's great well, that is excellent well thank you so much for sharing I, we we also we like to end um all of our sessions with um if you were to give someone like our audience a a well a, what would you leave them with what would you want to leave somebody that's kind of like in the in this kind of what would you call uh um, that in between state yeah not, in between not mm -hmm. thinking not knowing should they change should they stay the same like you know trying to figure it out what yeah. would you tell someone them? that's in that space first i would say don't give up that that's the first thing i would say um and that people need you and i think that that's something that we forget that you when when you're kind of in a place where you're, you're, you're not feeling confident about yourself, but you don't even have to be miserably sad, you just don't feel sure of who you are, just know that there are people who need to hear what you have to say. They need, need whatever it is, the gift that you would have inside to give to the world. Somebody needs it. And you, you are seen and you are needed. The world needs people who have a heart to do something good to make a change because you know we we really really need the people who are um hopeful and who are the lovers and who are the healers we need those people in the world now more than ever and if you have something to offer that that comes from a really special good place just be brave <laughs> Be brave and people will help you other people who who hear what you have to say and know what you carry will want to help you and and yeah if they're watching this they're in good company like That's right. like talk to me talk to the two of you like you like this is your sign exactly exactly right very great point. awesome so if people wanted to get to know you and um and get a chance to be blessed by your awesome writing where would you point them to i really want them to be able to see you sure uh probably the easiest place right now is through instagram um i post my most of my writing there and i'll i link to facebook but it'll be easiest to find me that way and connect with me um my username is is tiny quill it's t i n y q u i l l Okay. And uh, yeah, that's the easiest way. You can message me too. I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to talk. Okay, good. I just want to thank you for offering that because I'm pretty sure that advice is going to uh, resonate with someone and get them to make that switch. So I really appreciate your time and uh, your comments. Awesome. Thanks so much, you guys. You are so very welcome. All right, guys. Well, you heard from Sarah. Go ahead and do it. This is your sign. <laughs> make the switch. <laughs> All right. Bye.